Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now. There's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right Chase and Blood Church, pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning. Jesus Christ, he died, he buried, and rose from the dead, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's a heart belief and that the blood he shed atones and forgives you for your past, present, and future sins. All at once, he said it is finished when he was on the cross. And that means you can't earn yourself into heaven. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, It's not a work that any man can boast. We're taking a look at seven different verses that we can count on for God as our strength and in him. All is possible. Psalms 46 verses 1. We'll start there. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And it goes on to say here in verses 2 and 3, that therefore will, will not we fear through the earth be removed and through the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and the swelling thereof salah. Trust Jesus. He is going to protect us. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Isaiah 40.31 But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. God will give us the strength that we need. This is the second Advent passage about the return of the army with Jesus Christ, but yet it is. Also, something that the Lord can give us and renew our strength. Matthew nineteen twenty six. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. And in Ephesians six ten. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. How do we do that? We put on the armor of God. Verse eleven. Put on the armor, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's spiritual wickedness in high places. There's evil rulers of this world that have an agenda against God. And we, we do not battle against people, but rather these principalities. And verse 13, we take, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We're not running, we're standing with the Lord. The Lord is our, is our strength and our power. Psalms 91, one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. He's my refuge and my fortress. Amen. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, to end it, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. All things. That means anything. As Christ strengthens us, as we keep His will in mind, pray daily, 
supplicate. If you need prayer requests, leave them. Subscribe and thumbs up. We'd love to have you join our Bible-believing community. God bless and have a great, great day.